Hi class, in chapter 2b we're going to be talking about actually the chemistry that makes up living things. We just came from 2a and in chapter 2a we talked about the atomic structure with protons, electrons, and neutrons. We talked about um, the atomic structure and how we could go from an atom to an ion to an isotope. We also talked about the structure of water and its important properties and we even talked about pH. That is actually part of what we call inorganic chemistry. We're going to move more into this section called biochemistry. And biochemistry is simply what it is, is the chemistry of life. So it's a chemistry that makes up living things. So chemistry in general is broken up into two parts. Inorganic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry talks about really small molecules like oxygen gas and hydrogen gas and propane and things that usually don't contain carbon for the most part, with a few exceptions like carbon dioxide. And we'll talk about, we talked about the waters and the salts like sodium chloride and the acids and bases that we just finished talking about last week. The part of chemistry that we're going to focus on in biochemistry, biochemistry is all about organic chemistry. Now don't think about organic such as it's grown all natural, free of pesticides and herbicides and free of hormones, like in the organic section of the grocery store. That, that term organic is a little bit different because it relates to the food. This time in chemistry, organic is going to deal with any sort of compound that has the atom of carbon. So carbon is the, the, um, the big atom that we're going to be looking at in this and why it's so important. And so with organic chemistry, again, I just said, they have to contain carbon. And because carbon is such a social atom that we're going to look at, it can make really big things, really big molecules. These molecules, the four that we're going to talk about, are carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. And it's all because carbon is good at making really big molecules. Organic chemistry can be confusing to a lot of people. It could be really hard. I took it in college, and it was a very difficult class, and a lot of people kind of were all upset taking it, and they were freaking out and studying all this time and worrying about this all the time because it was so hard. I don't want you to think that it's going to be like that. All you have to do is take it one step at a time, and it, would, it makes a lot of sense. But you have to use your foundational information from Chapter 2A with atomic structure and whatnot to actually understand this. So if you're a little bit kind of confused on that, go back and watch my chemistry videos and refresh your memory because you can't really move on and understand biochem without the basic fundamental chemistry information. So uh, stay calm, so to speak. One other thing I want to talk about is I really feel like organic chemistry. There's a quote from a famous scientist by the name of Carl Sagan, and he said, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. I really feel that this is very pertinent, and they put like a little test tube with DNA in there, and DNA is a nucleic acid. So it's something that we're going to be talking about. I really feel that biochemistry and organic chemistry deals with the incredible things that we know about the human body and all living things. It comes down to the biochemical level, how our cells talk to each other, how our cells communicate and function and maintain our homeostatic balance of being happy all the time. It comes down to what the chemicals are doing inside your body. So that's a great thing, especially it's how we know our medicines make us better, how we develop new medicines. It tells us why diseases make us ill or why disorders cause problems and how we could actually try to care for them and find cures for them or at least treatments. So it's really important, especially if you're going to go into that sort of a research field when you go into college. Okay, so let's move on and talk about carbon. I'm going to show you a video in class if I already haven't, and it's going to star this guy. There's carbon right there and about why he's so special and amazing. And one thing about uh, carbon is we already know this, that he has four valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons. It wants eight, so it has to find some way to get those eight and it's not going to become an ion it's actually going to share with other atoms because it shares it makes covalent bonds by making covalent bonds and sharing with other atoms the electrons it can make really large complex molecules now it doesn't it's not really carbon's a social butterfly it doesn't really care what atom or element it actually bonds to as long as it gets its four more electrons somehow because carbon is very social, it's able to make really big molecules. There are some examples right down here I want to point out that we're going to talk about later in the chapter. This one right here, this one is called a fatty acid. Fatty acid makes up the fats or the lipids inside of your body. And they're really long chains of carbons and a bunch of hydrogens pretty much. And we call it a hydrocarbon chain. So carbon, carbon, carbon all the way down with a lot of hydrogens around it you could see it's a really large molecule. They could be actually two to three to four times as long as this as well. This is a fairly short one. 
Over here, these six things are called amino acids. They're going to make up the proteins inside of you and every living thing. They're not quite as long as the hydrocarbon chains over here, but it's still carbon to carbon to carbon to hydrogen to nitrogens to oxygens. Carbon is grabbing onto whatever it's, whatever's nearby to make big molecules that are eventually going to link together, together to make macromolecules. So that's why carbon is kind of a special, important molecule. We have six elements that make up approximately 98% of your body weight, believe it or not, and we abbreviate them with an acronym called SCHNAPS. So carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur are the six big elements that make up approximately 98% of your body weight. But the top four, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, it make, those four total make up actually about 96% of your body weight. Oxygen believe it or not, is the most common, 65%, 18% for carbon, about, and hydrogen's right around 9 or 10%, and nitrogen is down by 3%. Anything, so those are the big four. So you're going to find these atoms in pretty much anywhere you go inside of your body. We do have other elements besides those six in our body, though. So this periodic table is highlighting the ones that we find in our body. The ones that are in pink are schnapps, the main six, but the ones in blue are the next most common, and the ones in green are found in very, 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 very small, minute quantities in your body, but they're very important. We call the ones in blue and green trace elements because they're found in very small quantities. But you need sodium, potassium, and magnesium for cell communication. You need calcium in your bones and for your muscles to contract and relax. You need uh, chlorine for your cells to communicate. And you need a bunch of other things like iron and whatnot to actually make your cells work. And so they're very important. You have to find them in there. But again, the top four are right here. We have a molecule that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. This molecule right here is called ATP. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is actually your energy molecule that makes your body work. It makes your cells work. We eat food, such as glucose, and we actually take the food and nutrients and glucose that we consume, and it's converted inside of our body, inside of our cells, to make this molecule, our energy molecule, called ATP. So the, we're going to talk about it a lot more later, but right now, I put it up here so you can see it's made of carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. It has five of the six big big elements in one molecule right here that's super important. So keep that in mind that you're going to find these atoms wherever you go inside of your body. Now, the four big macromolecules that make up you and every living organism on this planet are, are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And because they're big molecules, we call them macromolecules. All macromolecules are polymers. Poly means many and mer means part. So macromolecules are made of many parts. They're big things make of, made of many smaller parts. Those smaller parts are called monomers. Mono means one, mer means part. So these one part pieces, like Legos, are put together to make really big structures inside of you. And when we look at these, here's a, here's a chart that shows the monomers and the polymers of these four right here. So when we look at proteins, we're going to talk about something called an amino acid. The monomer is an amino acid, and they hook together to make our proteins. Over here, this thing makes up nucleic acids. This is the monomer of a nucleic acid. It's called the nucleotide. When you hook a bunch of them up, you get the polymer, which is, in this case, DNA, a really big molecule. Down over here, this one is the carbohydrate monomer, called a monosaccharide. This is a simple sugar. When you hook a bunch of these simple sugars together, you make big, complex carbs like starch. And then down here, this one down here is actually the lipid-like monomer called a fatty acid. And when you put them together, you can get bigger fats inside your body, such as triglycerides. So we're going to talk about all these things coming up in this chapter. But I just want to recap one more time and make sure you understand the four similarities that carbs, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids have. They are polymers. They are complex molecules made from a lot of small pieces called monomers. So this is showing our monomers being put together into a long chain called a polymer. That process is called polymerization because it makes a polymer. Now, each of these molecules has to be built up or broken down. How do you get those little pieces together? Or how do you break them down like during digestion? Well, there's two reactions that help all four of them build up 
or break apart. The building up reaction or the joining is a reaction called dehydration synthesis. Reaction is RxN in science. Dehydrate means no water, to, rem to remove water. Syn or synthesis means to build or make something. So we're making something by removing water. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a hydroxide from one molecule and we're gonna take a hydrogen from the other that makes H2O and we're gonna kick it out. So you can see the H is coming off one side, the OH is coming off the other. That makes a water molecule. The atoms left over will reach out and share their electrons with the one next to them and form a covalent bond between them, linking them together. The opposite reaction is called a hydrolysis reaction. Hydro, that means water. Lyse or lysis means to split or to break. So it's a breaking down reaction, reaction that breaks molecules. Instead, it's going to be the opposite. We have to add water to break. So if we return the water that we removed originally and put the hydrogen back on one side and the hydroxide back on the other, it will separate them and split them apart. So dehydration puts together and hydrolysis splits apart. And so here is a, another version, I think it's on your paper, of your dehydration. You take the water out and it covalently bonds them together. Over here, you take that water out and it bonds them together to make a larger polymer. If you want to break them down, all right, so you add that water back in. You put the OH and H on separate sides. It breaks them apart. Do it again, it breaks them apart. Now, we're going to do this with more specific monomers, though. This is a carbohydrate monomer called a monosaccharide. It's a single sugar. So this is not showing all the atoms that make it together, but it's showing that each side has the OH on it. As long as you take the hydrogen off one and the hydroxide off the other, then that makes a water molecule. It's going to leave, and the oxygen is going to be left over, and it's going to reach out to the atom over here and covalently bond and link them together and make sort of a bridge. And so you could see how they are all connected with that oxygen between them. That's all because water was removed. This is actually the breaking down of those two sugars, but in a slightly different, more complex picture. So in this picture, you could see more of the hydrogens, carbons, and oxygens that hold these two sugars together. But we want to break it down. So this is a hydrolysis reaction. We're going to add water back into the equation, also with some enzymes to help us. We'll talk about that later. But if we put the OH back on one side and a hydrogen back on the other, then they are now separate. And so there is your hydrolysis reaction. So you have to just remember that they are opposite reactions of one another. They're not always going to be the sugars. These are amino acids. These make proteins. So if I want to hook this amino acid with this one, you can see they're not connected, but I could grab an OH and an H off each side, remove it, and the carbon and the nitrogen that are left over will reach out to each other, share their electrons, and form a covalent bond. And so here's the bond that's holding them together. There are specific types of covalent bonds. This one's called a peptide bond. We'll, we'll get to that. But if I want to break these, this protein down, then I need to add the water back in to separate them. So this whole chapter is going to cover these four macromolecules. You have to remember the word monomer, polymer, dehydration synthesis, and hydrolysis through all four of these because that's how they're each made out of, what they're each made out of, and how they're each put together or broken down, no matter which four of these we talk about. So keep that in mind as we go through this whole chapter.